right so yeah so that's my mic is on here so first thing you know guys who have just come in um, please ensure that you are logged in with your subscription email id and not with a simple name for example i can see here let me see uh, i can see that no one is logged in with a name here so that's good you know but log in with your email id so that we can identify you um, uh, and uh, you know so so as we have already published you know that basically uh, this training is regarding msbi and uh, we have also published our topics what we are going to conduct right so these topics are nothing but they are labs actually at the end of the day so you can see like you know assignment number one or i'll say lab number one doing this lab number two doing this lab number three doing this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go lab wise one by one and then and then we'll see that how we can continue this you know every saturday and sunday nine to ten okay so um so let me know, you know, first thing, you know, how many of you guys know MSBI, right? Or what exactly is BI? So let me go and put a poll here just to get a sense, you know, that how many of you guys know MSBI? So how many guys know MSBI? Okay. So very quickly, I'm going to go and put a poll here. <clears throat> so I'll just put a yes and a no over there. <coughs> and in case you know MSBI, you know, just put in your Q&A box with only one line what exactly is MSBI, okay? Or what exactly is BI, I will say rather. So just one line, you know, saying that, okay, this is BI, okay? So I can see that majority of the class are probably not aware of MSBI. So that's that's okay, you know, so that, that's what I, that's what is my work, right? To train you guys, okay? So fine, I'll do that. So let me see, you know, so if, if people who have, I can see that there's seven or eight people, they have said that, you know, they know MSBI. So can you go and put over here, you know, saying that what exactly is MSBI? So, uh, I can see that a lot of these, a lot of guys are saying, analyzing about data and somebody really, uh, you know, Varun sir has really pinpointed it, you know, exactly like SSIS, SSCS and SSRS, right? Right, so I can see two or three answers over there, but very quickly, uh, in short, let me talk about what exactly is BI. So I'm going to open a notepad here, really I don't have any kind of, any kind of PowerPoint presentations here. Um, so I'm going to open here this notepad. So what is this BI, okay? Uh, BI stands for business intelligence, so that's very easy. Uh, but BI is nothing but, you know, basically uh, converting data into information. If you put in one line, business intelligence is all about taking data which is in raw format or in good format, whatever it is, right? Taking all the data and then converting into information. And by looking at that information, you can do better decision making, you can do better analysis, right? Now, in order to convert this data into information, frankly, right? You have to do a lot of things because when we say data, data can lie in an Excel sheet, data can lie in notepad, data can lie in some, some database, I don't know where it can lie in, right? So in order to convert this data into information, uh, we need to do some steps. For example, the first step is definitely, uh, because data can lie in different kind of data sources, the first thing is we would like to do extraction, right? Extract this data, right? And uh, uh, dump it in a central place right so first thing you know from moving from uh, you know means going from this place to this place that is going going from data to information the first thing is we have to do extraction extract that data transform it and load it right so in other words the first thing what we have to do is we have to do etl extraction transformation and loading the second step is once we have extracted and loaded that complete data into a central location right so this this data over here you know it can be an excel sheet it can be in a word document i don't write so from different uh, sources you have extracted the data you have transformed them and you have loaded them into a central location now this central location people term it as data warehouse okay these are all business intelligence terms okay so what you do is you load data from various sources and you dump it into a central uh, kind of a structure, you know, which you have created in SQL Server or must be in Oracle, whatever is your database. And that kind of database is termed as a data warehouse. Okay. So once, you know, this ETL is done and it is, you know, you have loaded this data into this data warehouse. The next thing is you take this data warehouse data and you do analysis on it. Because remember, once the, all the data is dumped into data warehouse, you know, it still does not make sense until you do analysis on it. And once you have done analysis and once whatever analysis you have done, you'd like to go and display that analysis, right? So in short, you know, if you, if you say that you want to go from this data to this information, right? 
the first thing is you have to do ETL, extract it, transform it, load it into a central thing called as data warehouse. After that, you can you would like to go and do, do some analysis on it, and then you would like to go and display the information to your end user, right? Now, in uh, in my, if you, if you see from the Microsoft MSBI perspective, how do you do this? So this ETL, this extraction, transformation, and loading is done by SSIS. Okay, this analysis is done by using SSAS. And this displaying of the information, I'm sure all the .NET guys know, is done by this favorite reporting software SSRS, right? So what is BI? BI is nothing but moving from moving that raw data into information. For example, look at Google. Must be Google must be having huge raw data at the back end. But that raw data, when we actually go and search on Google, right? You know what you see is the information, right? So that raw data moving to that Google search engine is nothing but you know a uh, kind of a BI, right? So that was a very simple definition of BI that extracting, transforming and loading by using SSIS, doing analysis by using SSAS and then displaying information by using SSRS. So this was a very short and sweet introduction to BI and how MSBI actually helps us to do ETL or it helps us to do BI. Okay. So when you go and you know invoke this MSBI project, right, you can see very quickly, I'm going to go and open this notepad over here, right. So when you do a file new project in your business intelligence uh, studio here or uh, you know in your uh, you know in your 2012 uh, data tools right you can see that you know there are lots of templates here right so you can see for example for doing ETL there is something called as integration services project right uh, to do analysis you can see there is something called as analysis services project and you can see to do SSRS you have something called as the reporting services project right. Right, so any questions on the basic concept of BI, what I've talked about. So if you have any questions, you can go and put your questions. Um, uh, disturbance, okay. So you can put your questions over here. So any questions on this basic concept of BI. For the first lecture, we are going to mute everyone because, uh, you know, we have like 70, 80 attendees in this room. We have 200, 300 attendees on the different rooms. So a lot of people around there. It's, it's very difficult to control the mic on the first two sessions. So the first two sessions, we are not enabling mics for anyone, but yes, from tomorrow's or from day after tomorrow's session, we, we are going to definitely enable mics. So for today, you have to go and type the type in the Q&A box. Right. So any question on the basic concept of BI here, what I've said. So BI means converting data to information. Yes. Any questions here? And uh, frankly, you know, I, whenever I... I talk about BI, right? You know, I talk about one very interesting. Uh, I don't know if I have that image over here. That image really reminds me of BI whenever I do BI. Ah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So that's a very nice cartoon from my friend here. So basically, you can see here to collect data, you're going to use SQL Server integration services. To analyze data, you know, you can use SQL Server analysis services, and to display data, you will use SSRS. So that 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 this cartoon image always reminds me that what is BI all about. Right, any questions, any queries, yes. Uh, where will I get uh, BI related uh, project templates? You know, no, no, it's not in Visual Studio actually, okay. You, if you go to your Visual Studio, no, not from there. You know, what you have to do is you have to go to your SQL Server. So, for example, let's say it is SQL Server 2008 or 2012. You have to click on that. You can see on the menu here. For example, if it is SQL Server 2008, you can click on this SQL Server Business Intelligence Studio here. In case you are using SQL Server 2012, you have the data tools over there, right? So this is what you have to click. You can see for 2008 and for 2012, you again have a such kind of a intelligence studio over there. So it is not a part of exactly Visual Studio as such. Right. Okay. Uh, <coughs> So now the next thing is, so we'll go ahead now, let's start with the labs. So that was all talks. Okay, so let me go ahead and move to the labs here. So let us start with the first lab of SSIS. So as I've said, SSIS is all about loading data from one source into a destination, right? So what we'll do is, let us go ahead, take a simple, simple text file. This is lab number one. So let us go ahead and load a simple CSV file into SQL Server. So what I'll do is let me go and open my SQL Server over here. So let me quickly go and use my SQL Server. I know that I'm using SQL Server 2008. You know, that's pretty old, right? But that's fine. You know, at, for the initial days, right? For initial today and tomorrow, 
you do with 2008 or you do with 2012, you know, it's, it's not a big difference, frankly. Okay. And even with 2014 also, it's not a big difference. So some of the basic menus, they're absolutely same. But what I will do is, you know, must be from the, from the third day or fourth day, I will start using at least 2012. Okay. So for today's session, guys, I'm going to use 2008, but the menus do not change a lot. Okay. So I'm going to go and connect here. So don't think that, you know, you're learning old SSIS. Okay. It is all new. It's only that only the basic concept I'll start with 2008, but later on I'll just, because actually my virtual machine is not working today. That's my problem. So that's why I'm just, you know, coming over here. So what we'll do is we'll do lab number one here. So let me go to the tables here. You can see I have a very, very simple table here called as TBL customer name. Okay. So what we'll do is uh, I will go and first delete all the records from this table so that I, we can start from scratch here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so what this, what does this table have here? So I'm going to go and sorry, do execute here. So this table, uh, let me also on my zoom tool, you know, because the zoom tool really helps us. Uh, so I'm going to go and on the zoom tool here. Right. <clears throat> so what we are going to do lab number one. So you can see that I have a very, very simple table here. It has uh, actually six columns, you know, forget about these three columns for now. Okay, leave this, okay, leave these three columns. So it has an ID, it has a name, it has a salary. Okay. Now this is SQL server. Okay. And what I'll do is I will, you know, I'm going to go and create a CSV file here. Okay. So I'm going to go and create a CSV file. To create a CSV file, you can just use simple notepad. So I'll say here ID, name and salary. Okay. So let's say ID one, name Shiv, salary 1000, right? Two, Raju, and that's a 2000. Okay. I'm going to go and save this CSV file. So let's say I'm going to go and save the CSV file here saying my salary.csv. Now it does not matter. You save it as CSV or you save it as TXT. It does not matter at all. But at this moment, just, you know, for better sake, I'm going to just make it as CSV. Lab number one, first demo. So what are we going to do here? As we said, SSIS is all about extraction, transformation and loading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and read this CSV file by using ETL. That means by using SSIS, right? And I'm going to go and load that into this table here. Okay. So that is lab one, right? So, so let us go here. So let us go to our SQL server business intelligence studio. In case you are using 2012, you can go to the data tools, right? So only the names have changed. So do a file new project. So first ask yourself a question. So what do you want to do? You want to do ETL, right? That means SSIS. You want to do analysis. That means SQL Server Analysis Services Project. You want to go and display the data. That means SSRS. Okay. So I'm going to go and collect, uh, select on this integration services here. I'll say lab one. Okay. CSV to SQL. Right. Now, um, as soon as you know your SQL Server SSIS Studio opens, right? This studio is not same as the studio of Visual Studio.net or C Sharp or ASP.NET. You can see here things are very different here. You don't see your Solution Explorer. You don't see all those things, you know, which which you are more, uh, you know, which a normal .NET guy sees, right? But believe me, first two or three labs you will feel very cumbersome. But after that, believe me, SSIS is the most easiest thing what you can do in your in your life. Okay, so. So first thing is you can see here, there are a couple of tabs you can see, very, very different kind of user interface. So you can see here very quickly, I'm going to go and put my zoom tool here, you know. So first thing you will see, uh, there are a couple of tabs here. For now, you know, forget about these two tabs at this moment and concentrate on these two tabs. Okay, control flow and data flow, okay. And uh, for now, don't think anything, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll explain you what is control flow, I will explain you what is data flow, okay. Um, let me just go and do this demo and then I'll, I'll go and explain you what these two concepts are separately. Okay. Because once I do the demo, you'll get a lot of ideas. So first thing is forget about this two tabs at this moment. As time comes, you know, as we go ahead with the labs, I will talk about these two tabs as well. So at this moment, leave it. So first thing, step number one. So you will go here. You can see now when you're on control flow, you can see there's a toolbox here. Okay. So I'm going to go and drag and drop a data flow task. Okay. So a task in SQL Server is something what you want to do. Now currently, because I'm going to go and load this CSV into SQL Server, so the task is more revolving around data flow, right? It's revolving around data. For example, you can see here if the task is about transferring a file on, on FTP, you can use FTP task. If the task is about you know executing SQL, you will use that task. But at this moment, the task is all about 
loading a data from one place to other place, right? So I'm going to go and put this data flow here. If you wish, what you can do is you can go and name this, uh, saying that, okay, load from CSV, okay? Now, once you're done with that, you can select this load from CSV here and you can double click on it. The time you double click, you can see here, you can, you can see my mouse pointer. If I time I double click on it, I go to the data flow, okay? And the time I go to the data flow, you can see my toolbox has changed. You can see over here, my toolbox has completely changed. Okay, so when I'm on the control flow here, I click on this, my toolbox changes. When I'm control flow, there is some other toolbox. Okay, so remember both of these things are different, but for just for, you know, just for understanding sake at this moment, data flow is exactly where your ETL happens. Let me make it short and sweet. Data flow is where exactly your ETL happens and control flow triggers the data flow. So you can think about at this moment, okay, actually control flow is, is much more than that. But at this moment, you can think about that control flow actually invokes data flow, okay. So the control flow goes and invokes data flow and inside data flow, the actual extraction, transformation and loading happens. You can see over here, look at the toolbox of data flow, okay. Let me go and zoom here. You can see what is ETL, right? ETL means you have a source, you do extraction, you do transformation and you do loading, right? So you have a source here. When you extract, you extract from a source. You can see here, the first tab over here, data flow sources. You do transformation, for that you will use this component here. And the destination loading is done from this component. So you can see here clearly, all these three tabs, you know, they point towards ETL. Extract it, transform it and load it. So, you know, just to give you a very short difference between control flow and data flow, data flow is where exactly the ETL happens and control flow invokes data flow. I will talk more about control flow later on, but for at this moment, you can keep that definition in mind. So I'll go here now. So what I want to do here. So I want to go and load from a flat file. So I'll take this flat file source here. Remember, at the end of the day, a CSV is a flat file, right? So you can see here, I've dragged and dropped this flat file source here. So I'll say here, read, read from CSV, okay? And uh, currently, I don't have any transformation. I want to just read the data as it is from the source to the destination, right? So I will go here to this destination here. So there is no transformation at this moment, okay? So I'll say, okay, go and use ADO.NET destination. Now I'm sure that everybody is aware of ADO.NET. ADO.NET is nothing but it's a provider by which we can go and connect to SQL Server and other RDBMS data source, right? So you can use SQL Server des destination as well if you wish, but even ADO.NET destination at this moment will do, okay? So you can see here, I'm gonna go and read from CSV file and once it is done, this data will go into this ADO.NET destination, okay? So what I'll do, first thing you can see, very quickly, in case you have not configured the components of SSI, as you can see this red color over here, which clearly indicates that these components are not configured and you need to configure them, okay? So first thing is, you cannot run your SSIS package. This is termed as the SSIS, whatever complete thing what you see here with the data flow and control flow is termed as a SSIS package, okay? So you cannot run the SSIS package until you go and remove this red dots over here, right? So let's go step by step. Let's remove him first and then let's remove him first. So I will go with the first component, right click, edit. So I'll say, okay, where is my file? So I'll click on this new thing here, flat file connection manager. That will help me to locate where my file is. So I'm going to go and click on new here. I'll say CSV path. So I will browse here. So if you remember, I had created a CSV called as mysalary.csv in my, uh, on my desktop here, right? So I'm going to go and say, this is a CSV file. I'll say my salary. Okay. I'm going to open this. Uh, now remember in this my salary, the first column, the first column, the first row is the column name, right? So you can see here, there's a small checkbox here saying that, okay, so what is the first row? So here's the first row is the column name. I've selected this. And I'm saying that the, it's, it's delimited, uh, you know, by the, the row is delimited by a enter and, uh, uh, you know, the columns are delimited by a comma, okay? So you can see the row delim delimiter is enter and the column delimiter is a comma. And you can see that I can also preview my data over here, right? So I'm going to do a okay here. I will go and check my columns as well. Yes, absolutely right. So if you see my, my salary.csv, Three, uh, three columns, ID, name and salary, very nice. I'll say okay. Now, the time I go and do okay, you can see the red sign has gone away from here, right? which indicates that 
this component is now configured or this this task is now configured but you can see the ado.net destination is still not configured okay so now the next thing is i'll take this read from csv file here now you can see this read from any component in ssis right uh, especially in the data flow task right you can see there are two arrows which comes out from here one is this green arrow at the left hand side and one is the red arrow at the right hand side okay the green arrow is where you know from the from where the data comes in and the red arrow is where your errors will actually go in okay so in case there is a error in reading from the csv file or the file is not located you know it, the, all those things will be sent in this red arrow here and the actual data will be sent in this arrow here right so now what we need to do is we need to take this arrow and drag and drop to the destination okay very easy right so i'm going to go and take this green arrow here and i'm going to go and put it in this ado.net destination right now i'll go and click on this ado.net destination i need to also configure this i'll say edit i'll click on new here now i need to go and provide my sql server location so currently my location is localhost whatever it is right so i'll go here and i'll say new i'll say control v here so what is my database my database is test 1 2 3 these are all standard i'm sure that you guys are doing this day and night right <clears throat> so i've given the connection here so i want to load that csv file into this tbl customer name table right so that is good i'm going to go and select that second i also need to go and specify the mappings here so you can see here at the left hand side it is my csv file right so this is my csv file right and at the right hand side is my table table tbl customer table right so you can see here i specified the mapping so id with id name with name and salary with salary great right uh, now remember you must be wondering that you know how did he make this mapping by itself uh, remember that at this moment you know my column names are same so my column names of my csv and the column names of my tables both of them are same so because they are same he has just figured out you know what to do right uh, but in case they are not same then you need to go and drag and drop this so for example if let's say the this id was not with the same name as here so you need to select this and you need to go and drag and drop and connect those columns right but for now you know both of them are same the names are same so he has done the automatic mapping i'll go okay so now you can see uh, both of the components are green and there is no red sign here and that's a good thing right so we have we are done we have set with the package everything is right now we can go and run this package to run this package you can see at the top you know there is a green button here and this this green sign over here i'm sure people who have done visual studio they they are well aware of this run mode right so i'm going to go and click on that run here and let's see what happens so there my package is running you can see and he has transferred two rows from the csv to the ado.net destination so this is my csv here and yes that is right you can see two rows yes absolutely there are two rows right now let me go to my sql server here and let me check you know if that thing is there and you can see yes he has loaded those two rows into my table right leave the other columns at this moment i will talk about this columns later on so that was the first lab you know i know that this uh, normally the first labs for people who are new come to ssis is tough to understand but that was the first lab of loading csv file into sql server so any questions here yes if you have any questions you can put it on the q and a box here right uh how many formats of files it will support okay so first thing vedu sir anything anything uh, kind of separated you know it can be comma separated if you look at if you if you can go here right to your etl you know so i'm trying to answer the first question here guys i'll take some questions i will again move ahead and again take some more questions okay uh, so very quickly if you don't really know that what kind of sources it is supporting if i understand your question correctly vedu sir you are saying that how many formats of files it is supporting i'll rather say how many kind of sources it is supporting so you can see here uh, i'm going to go and zoom here so you can see that you know yes it can support any kind of sql server kind of sources rdbms sources it can support raw file it can support xml it can support flat file it can support excel source so i think the complete world is covered here right and when i say flat file right you know it can be anything it can be comma separated it can be enter separated it can be something you know so that separation is what we can go and always configure it right 
So yeah, it supports, you know, that's what it supports, uh, supports overall. Right. Uh, how to deal with comma separated? Uh, did not get the question, Sarang, if you can, if you can more clarify it because, oh, if you're saying the data has a comma in that, that's a question. Well, if the data has a comma, then, then it is not, then, it, you know, that's a problem, right? <laughs> okay. So, if the data itself is a comma, then must be CSV format is not better for such kind of data, right? Okay. See, remember, you cannot have the cake and say that you will not get diabetes, right? So, if you're saying your data is going to have a comma, then probably you should see for other kind of separators, right? <laughs> uh, Oh, Express Edition, good question. So I have VS Express 2013, okay. So first thing, you know, BI is not supported in Express, okay. So please install at least professional. Right. Table name, three columns, EMP ID. Okay, data conversion, I'll come to it, uh, Sora sir, don't worry, I'll talk about data conversion. I will, that, you know, if you see your labs, uh, uh, Sora sir, if you see this, uh, there is a data conversion, where is it? You can see casting. So, we have lab number four, just hang on and I'll definitely explain it. You will come sir, don't worry. Yeah. Right, so very quickly, you know, I'll take more questions here, but very quickly, one more uh, small thing here, which is very interesting again. Now what happens is, you know, you are on MSBI <clears throat> and uh, you are working with the MSBI project and uh, uh, actually in, in, in proper MSBI project, you will see that you will not see like two or three components, you will see 200 components here probably, right? So one thing is, you know, you should know that you should, you know, you should zoom and you should uh, use this facility here. You can see I can zoom and I can, I can make it smaller. So when you are working with bigger projects, you know, this one of, one of this thing, you know, which you will need again and again. Okay, that's one thing. Second thing is, um, you know, now now here's a, here's one source and this is one destination here, right? You're working in MSBI project and you would like to just know that when the data moves from this, this thing to this thing, right? How do I see it? How do I debug it, right? How do I know that how many data is passing from here to here? Can I stop it? Can I halt it? And can I view it? Yes, you can. So what you can do is you can click on this arrow here and you can see add data viewers, right? So you can click on add data viewers here. You can see add it, right? So what do these data viewers do? So when you go and run this, okay, what it does is, you know, as soon as the data goes from this thing to this thing here, right, it actually pops up a small window here and halts and says that, you know, this is the data which is moving from this source to this destination, right? So one more, you know, uh, very important concept here, data viewers, in case you are working with MSBI project, you will always find this very handy, okay? And one more thing here, which you can easily see, I'm going to go and just zoom it here. I'm going to go and again zoom over here. Um, when you run your package, right? If your package is running, the color is yellow. You know, so in case a component is just running, right? You will see that it's a yellow color. Once the package has ran successfully, this color changes to green. And in case there are errors, you know, this error of this component changes to red. So there's three colors, you know, which, which you will need now and then, right? So you can see here now, it is halted here and I can just go and run this and I can complete it. Now you can see everything is green here, right? So hello, the package is running, green, everything has ran properly and in case there was some typecasting errors or something, then it is a red sign, right? Right, so any questions? I'm going to just go and stop this thing here. It's back in. Right, so there it is, yeah. Okay, fine. So I'll take up some questions. So I've just, you know, shown you a small important thing here. Uh, loading in CSV as well as data viewers. Okay, interesting. Okay, now I'll take up questions again, okay. If the data has a comma and is enclosed with a double quotation mark, you know, then should the CSV work? Yes, we know, sir, it should work actually logically. It should work, yes. Can we give data as first name, comma last name in the data? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But then you should have the uh, appropriate, uh, you know, thing here. Can we do more than one file ETL at one time? Yes, you can. So good question here. Means what you're saying is, if I have a folder, okay, and uh, uh, correct me, Darusar here. 
then if I have a folder, right, and from that folder I have 10 files, you know, can we do that? Yes. So we have a very nice demo here. Uh, can you see this? File task control with a for loop. You would probably, you know, you have to wait till lab number 17. But that's what the lab is on 17th lab. We'll, 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 try to, we'll try to conclude that. Okay. Yes, we can. So in that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put 10 folders, 10 files, sorry, in a folder. I will loop one by one and I will do that, right? Okay. So there are a lot of questions here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So good question. I'll answer this. Very good question, Gagan, sir. There are, I can see so many tasks here, you know, which is the most used one. Remember, SSIS, SSAS and SSRS is all about data, data and data. So the most used task is a data flow task. Okay, that's the most used task. Okay. Data flow, the one which I've done now. Okay. So, right. Good one. Good. Nice. Yeah. So let us move ahead, guys. So what we'll do is uh, we'll do this small demo of lab number two, conditional split. Okay. So I'll take up questions. I'll come back again. I'll do the demo so that, you know, I, I do justice to your questions as well. And also I ensure that you know, we are proceeding ahead. Okay. Let me see that if everybody can hear my voice. Yes, you can. Good. Okay. So guys, uh, today what we have done is, you know, very quickly again for people who have just come in, we have muted everyone. You can see in this room, I have 94 people. Then there is other room, you know, where we have 200 people. There's other room. So like more than 400, 500 people online today, right? So it's very difficult that we can on everyone's mic at this moment. So that's why for the first two or three lectures, I'm going to go and mute everyone's mic. But I assure you, you know, as we move ahead with the lectures, you know, sometimes down the line, you can speak on the mic. Okay. So today for now, you know, that the lectures are, the, the mics are disabled at this moment. Okay. So lab number two, I'm, I'm going to go move, move ahead with lab two here. Uh, conditional split. So what is a conditional split? Okay. Uh, now what, what happens is now let's say, uh, let, let me go back to my CSV here. Now let's say I, I get some kind of data like this, you know, three comma bad data. There is no name here. Okay. So what I would like to do is you can look at the third row here very quickly. I'm going to go and zoom here. So you can see in the third row, you know, there is no name, right? So what I would like to do is I'd like to say, okay, if the name is not present, can you move these, these, these records, you know, to an error file? And if the names are present, right, can you, can you go and move them to, into a, into a proper table, right? Okay. So for that, you know, we can use this conditional split here, if conditions. So what I'll do is first thing is I will go ahead and I will delete all the records from my SQL table here. So I, I will, I'm going to go and delete that, you know, everything fresh, right? Right. So, so no records over here. Good. I'll go back here. I'll go to my toolbox view toolbox over here and I'm going to go and delete this now. So what it means is when the data is read from the CSV file, right? So this is the data is read from the CSV file. Very quickly. So let me show you my thought, what I'm going to do here. So when the data is read from the CSV file, if the records are proper, it will go to this SQL server. But if there are bad records, right, then it will go to this flat file source. Okay. So you can see here what I've done is you can see very quickly. So I will read the record from here and there will be a if condition here. Okay. So if the records are good, it will go here, right? Good records. If the records are bad. It will go here, right? Nice. So that's where we have this if condition or the conditional split. So I'll go here again. Let's go back, go back to our toolbox. Now remember uh, this demo, in this demo, we will also go introduce ourselves to transformation. So till now, this, this, this is extraction and this is the destination, right? Or the, the loading, but we have, we had not talked about transformation. So you can see here, there's a transformation tab here. Remember source very quickly again. Never forget this, you know, always, always look at your tabs at the, at the right column, source, load it, transform it and move it to a destination. Okay. So now this one is a, is a transformation. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go and drag and drop that if condition, where is the if condition here? Conditional split actually, conditional split. So you can see here, I drag, drag and drop the conditional split. I'm going to go and first move this thing here. And I'll say here, right click on this, I'll say edit. So I'll say here, if, so I'll say this is bad records. Okay. If the length, you can see at the right hand side, there are a lot of functions here, mathematical functions, string functions, null functions, right? What we are interested in a string function, which can help me find out the length. You can see I'm moving my length over here. So I'll say if the length of my name is equal to zero, it's a bad record. 
you can see here now you know if the length of my name is equal to zero it's a bad record so what's a good record a good record is if definitely my length is greater than zero right so length of my name is greater than zero good right so now you can see here i have two conditions here you know one is a bad record which is nothing but it should be equal to zero and one or one is a good record you know where the length is greater than zero great isn't it okay so i'll do a okay here nice very good so i'll go and take this again remember you know all the components you know they have two things right one is the output and the other one is the error output this this red sign is the error output and the left sign the green sign is the good output right so i will take this green sign here i will move it to my adio.net destination now when i do that when i do that when i move this arrow to this adio.net destination right it actually pops up me a window saying that okay so you want to move a bad record here or you want to move good records here so i'll say okay i want to move good records here because into this sql server i want to move, move good records right good nice now i'll take this next again you can see there's one more green arrow here sign right that's the second condition so i'll go and move it here he'll say oh very nice error here <laughs> you can see that there's an error here and the error says that uh, you are trying to move this to a source right now you can see this should be a destination right by mistake i have put it as a source so normally people who are first timers right you know they make they make these kind of mistakes they make this kind of mistake so you can see here i try to move this into this source here and it says from the source you can only go out right you cannot move in isn't it so that's the wrong thing so i'm going to go and delete this and i'll say okay it should be a destination absolutely right so these are some of the mistakes you know you will make as a fresher in ssis so flat file destination i'll select this i will move this thing here i'll say yes move bad records here you can see okay so i'll go back to my uh, flat file destination i'll click here and i'll say go and create a file an error file okay so i'm going to go and create a error file here remember this is lab number 2 okay error file i'll say this is my error file new error error cast i don't know whatever it is okay and say open yes first is the column names yes move that bad record here say okay mappings okay done good so you can see now you can see our logic over here so we read from the csv file you have good records it goes here you have bad records it goes here now a lot of people you know when you are watching this right you must be thinking that ssis is very easy isn't it i'm sure that a lot of people here now who are sitting in this training here they must be thinking of making a career move to ssis because it is so easy right you drag and drop the boxes and everything is done never think about it remember that two kinds of business intelligence developers you know one who knows the who know these boxes who can right click who can edit who can do all these small things and there are one more guys who know c sharp programming right so remember you know if you are a guy who is with c sharp plus bi you definitely have a cutting edge okay but if you are a guy who is just a bi who just drags and drop this right clicks edits right i think you know there is a limited scope for you guys so in case if somebody is wondering here because i know that lot of guys lot of you guys are c sharp developers a lot of time people get irritated with their career thinking that okay too much of programming how about going into the sharepoint and uh, dynamics and ssis and just move the boxes and you are done right don't even think about it right so remember that whatever ssis i am teaching on the first day today these are all very basics okay but later on then i start with programming you know that's where exactly things will become more tricky okay so don't look at the simple things and think that you want to change your career okay so remember bi with programming scripting great just bi you are stuck okay so that's just for people you know who are thinking that we can just move to ssis okay so good so i'm going to go and run this very quickly so that's a small you know tips from here <laughs> okay uh, strange huh he has not moved anything to the bad records why you can see here um in this my salary actually i was expecting some records i don't know if i have not saved it uh, let me just go and delete this delete the records from here i don't know what happened uh, oh god delete so <clears throat> 
actually what he should do is one record bad record should go here i don't know why one bad record is not going there oh there it is i think i did not save the file guys okay now you can see here great you know we are with the great output here so you can see two are good records and they are done here one is a bad record and it has gone here can you see right so if I, if i go to my sql server here if i go here now if i do a select you can see all the good records have gone here so we had two good records very quickly so you can see here you know so these were two good records so shiv has gone here nice raju has gone here nice but you can see this third guy has gone into that error file good isn't it and if i go to my error file here very quickly so let me go to, go to my desktop i have a bad desktop guys so <laughs> but you can see there's the error file here so that third record was a bad record and it has been moved to the error file so that was lab number 2 conditional split okay so conditional split there it is so i'm done with this first demo here i'm done with the second demo here and we will look into scd tomorrow okay because scd it is a, it is a big it is a bit bigger lab okay and uh, if i start now also it will take more 20 30 minutes okay so let me not go into scd and let me go to the questions here now okay so i'm going to go back to the questions here what is the scope of ssis so jayant you are asking me what is the scope of business intelligence actually it's great actually it's good good so scope uh, must be we can talk in detail about it what is the difference between conditional split the green and the red arrows okay we know sir the conditional split is for if conditions you just saw now right if this is this then go here if this is this the green arrow indicates you know from that arrow actual data comes out and the red arrows are for uh, errors so there is no you know means you cannot even compare conditional split with green and red arrows green and red arrows are for outputs while conditional split is for if conditions okay it's done yeah red arrow when to use the red arrow you will use the red arrow when you want to do error handling so you can see here can you see assignment number 4 error handling so we'll talk about it you know so what we'll do is must be in tomorrow's class or in in a day after tomorrow's class we'll see that okay so can we add some comments destination about what went wrong like uh, you can come if you say that you, you know can you add any comments or something yes you can put comments here comments means um, I forgot you know there is one small uh, you can actually put annotations okay something like this you can see if you if you talking that is remember that you know first thing you know uh, there is no source code here okay there is no c sharp here at this moment you know at least for this thing you can see here when i do a solution explorer you can see there is a dts x package so guys you know if somebody is saying commenting you know about source code so first thing let me tell you there is no source code here there is a simple dts x file which is actually a xml file it's a actually xml file but in case you want to just go and put some comments here you know for example you can put annotations you can see right click add annotations here so you can say something like this you know this reads from csv okay so if you're talking about comments you know this is the comment what what i understand at this moment we have in ssis okay this is a if condition so so hope that answered the questions okay comments about logging you are saying okay logging i'll talk about later on okay so i thought comments that comments okay so i'm sorry for that you know i think i did not understand your question right so but yeah that one you know okay i got a question so that i will talk about later on we have something called as error logging and etc so we'll talk about that yeah. what are the recorded videos i didn't find previous training videos which were recorded so ashish sir first thing you know as i have already gone to the questpon vd site here and frankly you can see ssrs it's a huge section by itself here and you can see so many videos on ssrs here so i am recording here you can see i have started my recording here but i don't know if i'm going to publish this or not really why because already we have the videos and it will just become duplicate okay so you can see here a simple demo of etl the same thing what i demonstrated here how to handle errors the same thing okay if conditions etc so you can see here uh, lots of those labs are already here so we don't want to duplicate data by putting this into questpon vd at this moment but yes in case you are interested in the recordings you know you can you can do that. okay fine so let's move ahead so yes uh, i did not find the previous training recordings you should actually so previous training was about uh, uh, it was about what is that it was uh, angular right angular so you can see here angular example two way bindings 
So, so you can have a look at that. Yes. So we have uploaded the previous recordings as well. Okay. Uh, both of your questions, Ramakrishnan. Yes. Please, can you put a question here again? Must be. I, I, I did not still move on how to deploy this program. We'll come to that. We'll come to deployment. Okay. Uh, Ramakrishnan, can you put a question again? Yes. Uh, we'll come to error handling. Chavan sir will do that. We'll come to error handling. Don't worry. Okay. Guys, I'm just moving lab step by step here. So, you know, in case people are really excited and they want to know about error handling, go to our SSIS videos today itself. And you can see there's a very nice video here. How can we handle errors in SSIS? So, in case you don't want to wait for my training tomorrow, you can always go and see that. Okay. So, for people who are Yes, uh, honey sir, you can do that, and and I'll 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 put this into list here because it's a very interesting demo to run a, a package of SSIS from Fisher. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, so sir, so I'll we'll take that later on, not over here. I agree. So, right, guys. So it's already nine fifty here. So we're going to go and end this session. So, uh, so many questions here. Can you show config file of error configuration? Um, I did not get Ramakrishna sir. Config, uh, config means at this moment you have this XML file here. So in other words, for example, if you see this GTSX package, you can see this view code here. You know, this is an XML file. So I'm not sure what configurations you are speaking about. So error configuration. We have still not configured the errors, Rama. So I'm not sure. We have still not done any kind of error handling at this point. Please visit the JavaScript section, sir. Right, so guys, so I know that there are so many questions here and uh, so many questions. Right. So guys, what you can do is, you know, if you can just copy your question and send that mail, send that question over here because we have a limited time here. Can you just send your questions at questpond at questpond.com and uh, cc at questpond at yahoo.com so that I can take up these questions. Okay, uh, We have limited one hour. So we have done two demos here. Okay, We have done one theory today. So guys, please copy your questions, send it over here. I'll try to see how much I can answer. Um, so what we have done today, first thing we have talked about theory, right? Remember, first we have talked about theory, which said that uh, SSIS or I'll say BI, I'm sorry, is all about moving from data, moving your data to information, right? And second, I showed you a very simple demo of loading this into a CSV file, and then I showed you a conditional split. Tomorrow we'll talk about SCD, okay? Uh, and then we'll talk about lookups and fuzzy logic. And while I talk about lookups, I'm going to talk about casting as well as error handling here. So tomorrow, at least I am expecting to complete these two demos at least, and then let's see how we can try to complete this as well. Right? Right, so I know guys, there are so many questions here. I'm so sorry that I, can, I can't answer at this moment all the questions. Right. Please send mail to all. Okay, <laughs> Okay. Argentina starts, started playing. Yes, sir. I think, uh, Acharya sir, I think we should all see tomorrow, today, you know, like what's going to... Fine, that, that's a good thing to see there. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll meet tomorrow, sharp 10 p.m. India time. Please note, huh? people who are from outside, from Europe and other countries, India time, 10 p.m. India time. So just go and adjust your clock accordingly. Thank you so much.